Able's in on air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners with Ableton On Air include Yachad, New York, and New England, where everyone belongs, and the Orthodox Union. Abel Dinonair has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com. Welcome to this edition of Able to Learn Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. Uh, Arlene is not here today. <clears throat> Arlene is not here today, but we would like to say um, thank you for, to Green Mountain Support Services for, um, for sponsoring our program um, and many, many, many others. Uh, welcome, uh, uh, Nicole Luongo, who is a cerebral palsy advocate and who does a television program called um, so called CP Conversations for Green Mountain Support Services. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your advocacy, how you became an advocate despite your cerebral palsy, and um, and um, CP connections, I mean conversations, sorry, CP conversations. So I just want to thank you for having me on today and let you know that it's a pleasure to speak to you and I can absolutely tell you a little bit about how my advocacy journey started. I never really advocated for cerebral palsy when I was growing up because it was just something that I had that I lived with. I'm the youngest of 11 children. So that's a full plate right there when you have so many people in the house and my mom never drove a day in her life. So I just went about my business and achieved, you know, everything that I wanted to do or work on whatever I wanted to do in life. But it actually comes full circle back to my mother. That's how I got started advocating not only for Alzheimer's, which is what she had, but it is because that I was trying to find help for her we were having problems finding help because it's very expensive and one day i saw a contest that was popped up on facebook for caregivers and if you won the contest you would get 10 hours of in-home care for the person that you're taking care of and you would win like other prizes which i didn't care about the other prizes i just wanted help for my mom and what you had to do to enter that contest is you had to submit your story. Somebody could submit it or you could submit it. And I told one of my brothers about this and he actually wrote something beautiful on my behalf. And the story goes, I was would check in there in case somebody left me a comment because I always want to acknowledge people if they're kind enough to vote for me or, you know, leave a comment. There was one woman on there who left a comment and she said that she was going to enter her brother in the contest and he, get this, this is where it gets really kind of like the universe is speaking to you. He was the youngest of 13 children. He also has cerebral palsy and his mother also had Alzheimer's. So I said, wait a second, how many times, how many things could you have in common with one person? But it leads to advocacy because that person had selective dorsal rhizotomy surgery, the same surgery that I would go on to have. It'll be eight years at the end of this month. So if I did not enter that contest, I wouldn't be speaking to you now. 
because I was trying to get help from my mom. And in turn, I actually found out about a life changing surgery that changed my life. Yeah. So, um, getting to you being a book writer, um, because I read some of your uh, synopsis on your books. Can you explain a little bit about that? I, the, I am the author of a poetry book. It's called Naked Desires. I just, um, you know, Okay, day... that's an open-ended <laughs> title there, but... Go well, there is a story behind that since we, <laughs> we were talking about dating off-air earlier. I, you know, I was enamored with someone and he was my inspiration to, you know, write poetry. I'd never really written poetry before. And I would try to go to sleep at night. And I don't know if you ever had this happen to you, but sometimes words, they would just, they would just come to my mind and I just wanted to go to sleep. So I had, do you remember I, I books, do you remember the old, the Mac, Yeah. the old, okay. I used to have one of those and it was Mac, on my night. Macs are horrible. Uh, Apple, well, some people. Okay. And actually, the book is going to be in print 20 years next year. Oh, next one, wonderful. I, we, must get, we must get a copy. <laughs> um. Amazon. And you can see I did a television interview for NBC6 South Florida. And you can see that interview on my website. Okay, great. Um, uh, you know, I know that people are not, well, s some people might be prisoners of their disabilities or, or their disability might stop them. What makes you keep going? You've asked the question that I've asked myself many times. And the answer that always comes to me is, I think I was just born like this. There's something inside of me that, I just never give up. I mean, when I was born, Lawrence, they called me the miracle baby because I was two and a half months premature. My mom, I think she, she almost, she didn't die obviously in childbirth, but they, there was a, there were issues, problems with, cause she was 44 and a half when she had me. And I was the size of a baby chicken. That's what I was told that I was, you know, if you put your thumb up like an adult thumb, I was so small and I couldn't walk until I was five years, four and a half, five, when I had heel, heel cord lengthening surgery. So what I would do, Lawrence, is I would put my hands in shoes, whether they belong to my parents or any of my 10 siblings, anybody. And I would crawl around the house like that. So I think that even at a young age, something inside me said, Hey, I can't walk like, like all these other, my siblings and people that I see, but I'm going to find a way to do it. And that's what I did. Okay. Um, you know, being a book author is a hard thing, disability or not. What, what made you want to do that? Did you want to tell your story more or, uh, you know, trials and tribulations and that kind of thing? Follow where the path goes. I was in, I started writing and then I was in a couple of poetry groups. At, I'm going to say Barnes and Noble. It might be ancient now. Like do they, you know, some, a lot of stores unfortunately have gone out of business, but when we used to be able to go out and go to bookstores and places and meet with people and a few people that I knew, they started publishing their work. Actually, I have to give a shout out to my friend, Tony. I don't know if he'll ever see this, but my friend, Tony, he published his book probably 22 years ago. It's a self-improvement book. And he would always tell me, Nicole, why don't you, why don't you put your poems in a book? And I literally thought, what's he talking about? Like, why would I want to do that? Cause that was back, think 20 years ago, Lawrence. That was right when self-publishing was just kind of getting started. It was very new. So I decided to go that route because 
to, to publish a book in a traditional way, it really wasn't going to be the best option for me because let's just put it, the, say it the way it is, publishers are not clamoring to publish poetry books. So that's another area where if you and I talk about all the time how people with disabilities, we make things happen. If there isn't, if there isn't a way, we make one. So with self-publishing, anybody can publish a book and we've seen that. Now there's so many different ways to self-publish and you can get whatever story that you want to tell out there. And so, you know, that's what, that's what I did. And people always ask me if I'm gonna write another book and so far the answer is no, because if I did write another book, I would want maybe it to be it wouldn't be poetry. I mean, it would probably be advocacy or something along those lines, but writing a book and the process to to market it and all those things, it's it's a lot harder than people might think. Yeah, well, like I said before, we have to just try because if we don't try, it's the same, it's the old the, uh, the old adage. The little engine that could, you know, the old saying, um, mm -hmm. and but but you know, people with special needs, like I said uh, before, when you interviewed me, um, you know, which is going to be on Green Mountain Support Services website, um, you know, CP, CP conversations, we, you know, we we as special needs can't give up so easy. So why do you think people with special needs give up so easy? Is there a reason behind it on, on your end of, of opinion? That there's several things that come into play, but before I answer that question, I want everybody to know that with my advocacy work, I published an article for HuffPost called SDR Life-Changing Surgery for Cerebral Palsy. And that, that article has gone around the world. I have heard from parents and adults with CP who have told me that that article changed their life because they never heard of the surgery and they went on to have the surgery. So by sharing my story, I'm helping other people just like what you're doing by having your show and featuring people like me so that everyone can see that our stories matter too and we can contribute positively to the world. And to answer your question, some people with disabilities, I know you've seen it, I've seen it, they just, they're complacent, I think, in their lives. I think that they might not have people around them who are speaking positively to them. So think about it, if you, if you live in a household or you're around friends who maybe are speaking down to you or they they think that you can't accomplish much so they're projecting that onto to you then then i think that's a reason maybe that somebody wouldn't want to strive for more but i also think that it you have to think about like with cerebral palsy there's different levels of cerebral palsy like everybody seems to think because the media doesn't cover our disability even though it's the most common physical disability in childhood. There's four different types of cerebral palsy and not every person with cerebral palsy is affected the same way. So if you have somebody like me who is high functioning and I don't have any other underlying medical issues, that's a different story than if you have somebody with cerebral palsy and let's say they have challenges in different areas that might make things harder. Like, let's say they, they have trouble reading. I mean, some people with CP have trouble speaking. There's, you know what I mean? So they, they might feel that, well, you know, I don't speak well, so they, they can't host the podcast. That's not true. You and I know people who they have challenges in many areas. But if you want something and you, you want to work for it and you want to do it, don't let anybody, I don't care if it's family, if it's friends, if it's your boss or somebody in your community, you define who you are and what you want to do. 
Yeah, because like I said, the the point is, you know, okay, we for example, we might not become rich from what we're doing, but if you don't try, how like example, and, and it goes back to the articles that um, I recently wrote. You know, I believe that, you know in in spirituality. You know, believe in something. You know, spir spirituality. Uh, you know, if God gives you something or gives you a gift, use it. So what, um, how, how um, did you have, well, did you have anything really bad happen in your life that you, you can tell people, well, that, that made you persevere more? I mean, you know, along with. To describe it mm -hmm. is that I grew up in a very dysfunctional family. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm the youngest of 11 children. So without, without going into details, you know, that's, that creates challenges in and of itself mm -hmm. that really you don't even, you don't even realize them Lawrence until you get older. Sometimes you don't, you know, like you just, you, you live with the people that you live with. Mm -hmm. And it affects you however it affects you, but you don't have a choice in that. You, you don't have a choice of what environment you grow up in. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that people didn't love me or anything like that, but I, should, I could write a book on some of that stuff, and pe people wouldn't believe me. They would think that it was a reality show, and it's, it's not, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> but, you know, I, ch I chose to... You you chose Focus on, you chose to break away from that. Let's put it that way. Correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I you know, if something if something is not serving you and people are toxic, even if uh, even like I said, I'll repeat again, even if they're family or friends, sometimes you have to love people from a distance. Well, Last question, because we can make this the last question, because we only have a little time left. Describe toxic for people with special needs, if they or our viewers who don't know a toxic relationship, for example. How do you? How can you break away from that to make yourself more positive? Example that I actually just did. You know, I'm ta I'm talking about anybody. You don't have to have a disability to relate to. If you have somebody in your life yeah. who is talking down to you, constantly speaking negatively to you, and I'm not referring to anybody in particular right now at this moment, I'm just giving an example, but I did have a situation happen recently where I felt that someone who I thought was my friend wasn't a true friend. Mm -hmm. And so I made the decision to block that person on all social media because we control who we let into our lives. We control the thoughts that go into our brain. And, and we all have a right to stand up for ourselves. And I think boundaries are very important. You have to make it clear to people that, hey, you know, if you're gonna speak to me this way, I'm not going to speak to you. I'm going to walk out of the room and I'm going to come back. Maybe when, when you're the person is clear headed or they can calm down, then we'll have, we'll continue the discussion. But that's something I had to learn. I, I go to therapy. I see a counselor, you know, every two weeks, probably for the past 15 years. And, you know, I had to, I had to learn all that because I didn't grow up in that environment. Mm -hmm. Our guest today was Nicole Luongo, uh, host of, C of CP um, Conversations, which is the podcast for Green Mountain Support Services. She's a self-advocate, and she's the book author who happens to be an advocate as well. Um, we would like to thank her for being a guest on Ableton On Air. Um, thank you again for being a guest on Ableton On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. Arlene is not here today. Thank you to our sponsors. See you next time.
Tables and On Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Abled and On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners with Abled and On Air include Yachad New York and New England, where everyone belongs, and the Orthodox Union. Abled and On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com.